Hi. So what you're about to see is the film that is responsible for the creation of Machinima.com, um, the feature film Bloodspell, and pretty much my entire career. It's the first Machinima film that I and Strange Company ever made. It was made in 1997. Uh, in Quake 1, which was one of the very first truly 3D computer games. It's called Eschaton Darkening Twilight and tells the story of a world where the apocalypse has happened but no one's quite realised yet, based on the work of H.P. Lovecraft. Doesn't really hold up to modern standards, uh, I'll have to admit, and plus, uh, since I made this I learned a few things about camera work, like the fact that I should probably have some camera work. But nonetheless, it's a fascinating historical artefact. It's still actually got a plot, I've just been watching through it. It's uh, got a story, you can see where it was going. And it presages most of the machinima movement and most of my career. So, hope you enjoy it. This is Eschaton Darkening Twilight. Sergeant, let's begin. I, I, say Tyrannus, I, I, DeSantis, Carolia, Mace, that Erythros, Kalis, that is not death, may live once more. Yai, Nyalathotep, Kalias, Chesai, Sangis, Sangis, and Caris, Saint Ekaderesi, blood and madness, blood and madness, blood and madness for the chaos that is to come. Don't. So, it speaks. Is it alive? Not for much longer. Get out of here. Oh my. So it's going to kill itself. How tragic. I must stay and watch the drama. Go away. Oh, I couldn't. It's so romantic. What is it? A girl? Or a boy? Or both up in your little ivory tower? 
It must be so unbearable. <gasps> Neither. I suppose you could say there's no point of delaying the inevitable. But I'd rather not to take anyone with me. I've got no money or food. Save us both the trouble. Go away. You're going to die. I need to stay. Oh. I see. I'm sorry. Just fucking get on with it. Daniel Markham. Cerise Claris. Well, then stay. But keep clear. Someone may as well get some benefit from my death. Enjoy. They will leave a neat corpse. Make it quick. You owe me that much. <laughs> Memories of the struggle against the dark. They freed us from O, oh, from need. Desire is all. They're a lot like us. Whatever. You found me. Get on with it. You still have the choice, you know. You know who your true masters are. No! No, Ella. Kill me now. <laughs> you think it. What's this? A friend? What? A pity. Oh well, they would have been insulted by this piece of dog shit anyway. Kill them both. Oh hell. Welcome to the Absence of Shadows. Who the fuck are you? Where are we? How obvious. obvious. You can do better can do than better that. Than that. Good evening. <laughs> safe. safe. And I have and been, I been called a poet. 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 There's no danger. No danger. Not here. Not, here. Not, Not now. now. Stay. 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 Wait. 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 Talk. 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 I have some I have tasks, tasks to attend to. What the fuck? Okay, who the hell were they? And why were you going to eat a bullet? To save them some trouble? They are, well, they were my friends. Alla, their leader, he was my partner a long time ago. But who are they? I'd at least like to have the courtesy of knowing who was shooting at me. We may be outlaws, cowboys and fools, but we kept this green ball of shit safe for longer than most people have been alive. It's ironic, really. I suppose it can't hurt to tell you. We used to be so secretive, so careful. Now, I was, or we were, Delta Green. The only thing that stood between the Earth and the darkness for near on 90 years. And the only organisation to know the truth. What truth? That we are not alone? Close enough. There are forces, powers and dominions native to this world and this universe that are utterly inimical to and hateful of human life. The forces that are responsible for your change amongst others. Some people call them demons, although that's a very poor, very inaccurate description. I suppose you could call them aliens, but they're more alien than you could possibly imagine. That is not dead, which can eternal lie. Most people who have any understanding of them call them the Great Old One. Ten thousand years before humanity, they were the original inhabitants of the Earth. Delta Green spent years fighting them and their minions, ever since the Innsmouth incident in 28. Throughout it, most of us didn't know what we were facing. Only a few people ever figured it out, ever connected the dots. Most of them went mad, but we still fought. What happened? We were attacked in 99. 
No one seems to know what sparked it off. I guess the Majestic Group decided our presence could no longer be tolerated. They had the skill and the manpower which Delta Green lacked. After the first series of raids, only Allah, Camp, myself and a few others survived. They wiped you out? I wish they had. No. I wonder how much of a coincidence it was that we were the only ones to survive. The few of us who knew something of the truth. As the attacks continued, our situation grew increasingly worse. Finally, we were trapped in, with moments before they finished us. Camp must have learned more than I knew, and he passed all his knowledge on to Allah. The old ones are trapped, you see, held in mystical prisons until the time is right for them to be released. But their powers, their knowledge, have filtered out into the world. What some people would call magic. Humans can, if they're sufficiently strong or sufficiently stupid, use these powers for their own ends. Although the power usually ends up using them. I knew that Camp had some knowledge of the powers. But he must have found something else. Something he had told Allah and not me. As the majestic group smashed the last door down, he turned to face them. He said three words. Words that I've never heard before. And then all hell broke loose. I have no idea what happened. Even now it's a blank. But we survived. Camp was killed in the attack. Or so the official story went. I think he killed himself when he realised what he had done. Delta Green survived, but it was changed. Allah was changed the most. He had been Camp's protégé. Camp had shared all his knowledge with him. He became strange and cruel. He spent most of his time studying Camp's books, and more he recovered. But we were all affected. I remember in 2000, just after the first big communications blackout. I was on an operation in Mexico, investigating some weird sightings in the forests. I'd been feeling strange, and I knew I was acting badly, short-tempered, nasty, whatever. I was asking villagers about the sightings, and they were being obstructive. The old man I was talking to spoke English, but he kept speaking in Spanish to half my questions, when he knew I didn't speak the language. Then it was like, I don't know, something snapped inside me. I pulled out my pistol and started shooting, and he kept shooting until they were all dead, or had run away. I was shouting something. I couldn't hear what. And then suddenly I heard myself. It was an invocation. A sacrifice to the great old ones. That was what was happening to us. We'd been changed into the servants of the creatures we were meant to be fighting. I ran. Allah was chasing me to bring me back into the fold. Or to kill me. No quips. No smart remarks. No sarcastic comments. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. I know something about your change. Compared to what you must have gone through, you'd have been justified. No, you wouldn't. But what are you going to do now? I don't know. There's nothing I can do. Thus goes Lincoln. Lincoln. Or Ramus. Or, Ramus. or Alexander. Alexander. What? Well, had they had said they that, said the history of the world would have been decided by their action. Lovely words. But then, I suppose that comes with the job. Ever heard the word chaotic, Markham? Chaotic heroism? Yeah, I've heard of it. It means fighting against something you can't beat and losing. Not necessarily. Yes, necessarily. Don't you understand this? I'm not just going to get hurt if I try to fight. I'm going to turn into what, what Allah is now. Don't you realise that? Don't you understand what would happen to me? You don't have any idea what you're asking. Oh, yeah. You said what happened to me was worse than what happened to you. You're right. I changed just over a year ago. Know what that means? One year ago, I lost everything I ever knew, everything I cared about. All my friends, my family, my home, everything. 
know what I have to do to survive. I see people in the street sometimes, whole people like you, looking at me. What do you see? Something desperate, loathsome, evil, a filthy animal. Know where I found myself after I changed? I was in the gutter, under a bridge. It stank of piss and shit and the smell of the tramps that lived there. Then I found I wasn't alone. There was someone else with me, only he wasn't moving. He was dead. Half his face was chewed off. And then I looked down and I saw that my hand was covered with fat and cold blood. And there was meat in my mouth. Do you have any idea what that felt like? Do you know how much I wanted to kill myself? No way I didn't. Fucking Coyote. I hadn't asked for this. Something had forced it on me. And I decided that whatever it was could fuck itself. I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to become a fucking animal. And I wasn't going to become something I wasn't. Do I have a hope in hell of succeeding? No. But I tried anyway. And I'm still here. And I'm still sane. So if you fight, you're risking being forced to help what you're fighting. Yeah, you are. But if you don't do anything, nothing. If you hide or you run, you're doing that anyway. You might be the only person who knows what you just told me, or the only one who will fight it. If you abandon that, you're abandoning everyone you might have helped, and you're helping Allah and his friends. And you're abandoning me. Have you wondered yet why I'm still here? Helping you is the only good thing I've had a chance to do since my change. It's my only chance to get back at whatever killed my life and nearly killed me. If you give up, you're not just killing your chance of fighting. You're killing mine. But I don't know what it is I'm fighting. I don't even know what happened. Well, would you would like, like to know that? that? Yes. Yes. If only so I can try to fight and fail. Well, there was a painter named, named D.L. DL, DL in, Chicago, in Chicago, living in a bar called the Blue Rose. Go to go him to and him you'll learn at least some of the All right, all right. How are we supposed to get to Chicago? You're already there. Walk through the door.
Uh, hi, I keep angles in here. Mind if I work whilst you look? It's nearly finished now. The angle's slightly wrong. But that can correct. 5, 7, 3.4, 1, 1, 9, 7. That's the formula. Formula? Five, Where did he seven, get that from? 3.4. What am I doing with? In my head. 5, 7, something here. 3.4, something. DL? Seven, Did you ever hear the name Dowloff? DL? DL? Stop painting! That thing's an old one. Dowloff, the render of the veils. It does what it says. It tears all the veils on our senses. Growing! It's expanding into the space available. We've got to smash the picture before it's going to fall. Oh, shit. Who the hell can put it down? Who the hell can put it down? The summoner! DL! DL, smash the picture! Destroy it accordingly! You called it up! You called it up! You can put it down! Destroy the fucking picture! Markham? The colours, they're gone. DL destroyed the picture. And Dowloth destroyed him. Not many people could have done what he did. Destroyed their own creation. That too. I saw them, Cerise. When that thing flooded across me, I saw them. I saw the reason we're both here. That was Dowloth, the render of the veils. An old one. Here. But DL sent it back. No, you don't understand. Dowloth has always been a creature of night. All the grimoires say it can't be summoned in daylight. Which can only mean one thing. Even before the picture was finished, it was here. It was free. But you said they were always here. Sleeping. Waiting. That is not dead, which can eternal lie. That's the first half of the couplet. Eons ago they lived upon the earth. They dominated the earth. But something changed. They went into a kind of stasis. But they will return. And the stars come right again. The great old ones will return. And mankind shall become as they, laughing and killing and reveling in joy. And the old ones shall come and teach the new ways to laugh and kill and enjoy. And the earth shall flame in a holocaust of ecstasy and freedom. That is what I saw. The stars are right. The old ones are free. We live in the end times. We live in the apocalypse.